Here's a game, Pop it, Popovich, also 1900. Uh, uh, let's see, I forgot to check. What do we what do we play here? D4. Yeah, I like to mix it up. Maybe I can get a Catalan. We'll see. Black has been doing all kinds of strange things. Yes, yeah, so this is the martial defense, which, as I've said many times, is not that great. Not so good. Just because uh, black loses the tempo, it's not like it's losing. Not like it's losing. And there are some tricks. Uh, black tries to get in the move d5 to or e5 to bust things up. Early queen trade will help help black's position. So in this case, uh, you can't play with e4. You can in some other cases, but uh, here you can't. He's he's put a clamp on it. So just uh, develop normally. Let's see, I could play here. He might pin it, but that would waste a move for him. Play out here. Uh, this is, seems like the most natural move to me. It's just a good square for the bishop, and if he wants to trade, he can. Brings my queen forward. A lot of times I'll just drop the bishop back and they'll stay opposing each other, which is uh, <clears throat> an interesting way to play because then uh, you're not, you don't really want to take necessarily because you might decide to uh, take back with the rook pawn and go for a rook pawn attack here. Okay, but it doesn't look like that's his plan. So now I can play um, e4, and I probably should. e4 with the threat of e5. He will play e5. I can push on with d5 and just have a little more space. And he will have a blocked in bishop. e4 also opens up the diagonal for my uh, dark squared bishop here. That's what you can do with the extra tempo that uh, Black gave you on this opening. So we just ran away. Uh, I was thinking this, this threat might be annoying. I certainly don't mind if he takes this knight here. That's not a problem. Take back with a pawn, defend my center. Here I'm threatening to push on with um, e5 once again and win the knight. Pin and win. <clears throat> so he kicks it. Um, so I will drop back and keep the pin on for a bit. He can kick it again, and I'll go to g3. He hasn't castled yet, um, so I don't think uh, there's any point in the sacrifice on g5. Other than opening up lines against me and giving up a piece for two pawns. But now this um, e5 square for the bishop looks good, right? Pins the knight against the uh, the rook there. <laughs> hmm. Defends this pawn, which is adequately defended in any case. So what is... I mean, the normal move would be knight to uh, c6 here. It would take control or, yeah, look at the e5 square, so that makes bishop e5 less attractive. So he went to d7 instead of c6. That makes sense too, though. He can uh, push the c pawn forward now. Okay, let's uh, ask the bishop what it wants to do. Because depending on where the bishop goes, I'll, uh, it may affect where I put the rook. He goes back, so then I put the rook on the c file. If he had taken, I would take back with a pawn and the rook would go to the B file. So he plays C6. Not playing C5. So he's giving himself a very cramped uh, position. If I play E5 here, though, he'll play knight to D5. If I take, he'll take. 
Looks like a pretty even position. How about if I play knight e5? If he takes, I take with the bishop. If he doesn't do anything, then um, <clears throat> well, maybe I can bring my queen over or something. Yeah, let's bring a rip to the center first. Let's complete this setup and see what he's doing next. He still hasn't, hasn't committed his king. Maybe I should just blast through the center while his king is there. Okay, so he does want to put his king over there on the weakened king side. So now knight here. He doesn't have to take and uh, doesn't threaten a lot. Pawn to h4. He takes, knight takes. Might be good, although I have to watch out for discovered attacks there. Let's start with h3. I'm thinking knight um, e5 to g4 is an idea here. Okay, let's drop the bishop back. I don't want to give it up for that knight. And then here makes sense to push the pawn rather than put a piece there because um, he's going to run short of squares, isn't he? Depends on where the bishop goes. If the bishop goes back to... Uh, g7, then I can kick the knight and has to come here. And I can take it and he'll have this doubled f-pawn and open... doubled f-pawn and an open um, g-file. If I, if I delay a move, like say I play queen to e3 so that if he goes there I can actually win the pawn and that gives him a chance to maybe push his f-pawn forward. So let's let's do this immediately. And just uh, grab that pawn. Yeah, so he breaks with f5. That was probably part of his plan all along. I'm not going to take on passant in this case. I'm going to take here. And if he takes on g4, I will take back with the queen and I'll have I'll be on the g file first. Bit dangerous with the queen and king lined up on the uh, g file, but it looks like I'll have time to unwind from that. King to um, h2 and rook to g1 and threaten threaten the bishop there. Also the knight coming in. Uh, he can trade it off. He can trade the knight off when it gets to g or to f6. So he brings the rook up. Okay, so let's immediately get the king off of the h file. Hmm. I was just realizing he could he could um, put pressure on my knight here with the queen to f8, and I need to defend it because if I move it, the um, the f f2 pawn is hanging. Oh, he didn't do that. Okay, so let's start with this move then. See how he intends to defend the bishop. with the queen. Okay, so now let's start bringing the knights in. Knight here looks good, right? <coughs> I think he would have been, he would have done better to double on the F file. Oh, but that's interesting. Okay, so my knight now is defending F2. This knight can move and attack his rook. 
And I should do it now before he has a chance to uh, to double rooks there, right? He's playing an interesting game, I think. He played a bad opening and gave up a pawn, but um, but he seems to be playing this part pretty well. It's, it's led to some interesting complications. So the rook can only go to f seven or f8 probably f7 it makes the most sense then he can still double on the f file but if he brings the rook over to f8 i will try and play knight to uh knight here ah so he's saying he will um yeah that's pretty clever um so i take he takes with the pawn and it's forking the queen and the knight If I go here, he takes, I take, he takes with the rook. What else could I try? I could take here. Guess that just loses the exchange. But I take, he takes, I take, he takes, and then I take here. He takes with the pawn. Can bring the rook over with check. Still have this knight here and this knight here. I can win this pawn. I guess this wins, right? I take, he takes, I take with check takes with the king I take here with check so I give up the exchange I get the exchange back he takes with the pawn can bring a rick over at the check I'm only one pawn up though do I have something better here I mean I could play knight to g6 and that would stop him from doubling here But I don't see the follow-up here. Let's uh, let's take this to the end game. He's wondering where to go. If he wants to hold on to this pawn, he has to come forward. Oh, he wants the knight, of course. <laughs> of course, that's 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 what he has to do. Maybe he was just wondering what my plan was. So my plan was to activate this rook. Knight to um, E or D. Knight D6 is a fork between those two pawns. You can't go anywhere to defend this one. <clears throat> so he went back there. Yeah, let's. Uh, this also shields my uh, D pawn. Oh, he goes there. 
So where is he going? He's going to give the check next, right? <clears throat> so I should avoid that. Not being too hurried, too much of a hurry to take things. And then he can come into this square. And then here is also subject to the fork. So I want to just stay on this file, I think. Get away from where he can uh, check me. I mean, from where he can fork me, at least. And then I'll push this pawn forward. See, I go here. He can push his pawn forward. I can still move my uh, <clears throat> my rook somewhere useful, I think, without getting forked. He's got the check. Oh, he didn't do that. The check, I guess the king goes up. So I wanted to get my uh, rook in here. He is winning the uh, e-pawn. Uh, the d-pawn, rather. Yeah, so what to do here? Uh, he's going to go here with check and pick up this pawn, which I don't really want to allow. So I'm going to move my king here. This knight is guarding the d8 square. Maybe I should have just gone check and take here. <laughs> That's probably would have been simpler huh, than moving my king. Now he can push on to f6. Let's see what he's got here. Taking this pawn threatens um, rook here to win the um, to win the rook in the corner. So now let's go go after this pawn and uh, try and promote try and promote my um, <coughs> my um, h pawn here. So he's going to push his pawns forward. I shall do likewise. So first we go with the check here. It'll drive him back one step. He goes there. <clears throat> guess I have to come forward with the king. I can move here. I'm defending the pawn. Maybe this is the way to do it. Hitting his uh, hitting his knight there, and he's looking at this square here. So I take the knight. He goes there. I can deliver this check. 
He could have taken this pawn. And now I'm getting getting sloppy here in the slow time position. I think this is pretty good though. Can't I uh, <laughs> can't I somehow mate him in the corner here? Where is the knight check? The knight check is here. <clears throat> okay, this was my idea and it's not working. My idea is not working. Go back to a different plan. So I'm defending this pawn. <laughs> and he's going after that pawn. Yeah, that's too bad. move quickly there. Getting down on time. Goes back to that one, yeah. <clears throat> Just mopping up these pawns here. <laughs> <laughs> if I get enough of them, then um, I should be okay. <clears throat> there we go. That should win. <laughs> He's still playing. Okay, let's just mate him with the uh, the rook, huh? I decided to resign. Okay, uh, anyway, that was a very interesting game. I will uh, check this out in a post-mortem and see you guys later. Bye.